In Daniel chapter 2, there's this amazing prophecy that tells about world powers a thousand years into the future. Today, King Nebuchadnezzar's dream. And there's a secondary lesson that we learn from this that we'll cover at the end of the video. Hi, this is Robert Furrow and welcome to Hot Topics. We are encouraged by those of you who are subscribing, liking, and sharing this video. Also consider ringing the bell so you can get all of our new videos. The comment section is open below. We'd love to hear from you. In Daniel chapter two, King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, the first world ruler, was thinking about the future. And he had a dream that was disturbing to him. And after calling together his wise men and his counselors who couldn't tell him his dream or the interpretation of the dream, he made a command that all of the wise men of Babylon were to be killed. Daniel took some time to figure out what the dream and interpretation was and then stood before Nebuchadnezzar. He told him that no wise man could interpret his dream, but said God could, and that he would tell him what his dream was and what the interpretation was. He told him that he had a dream of a great statue that had a head of gold, a chest and arms of silver, stomach and hips of brass, legs of iron, and feet of iron and clay. Now, when you think about that dream, it doesn't sound like it's very stable. You got all that gold and silver up on top and iron and clay mixed together for the feet. And in his dream, a rock came in that was uncut with hands and struck the statue in its feet. And the whole thing collapsed and became like dust and the wind began to blow and blew everything away. And the rock that was uncut by any hands grew into a mountain that covered the entire world. No wonder he was disturbed. And then he told him the interpretation. He said, you, King Nebuchadnezzar, are the head of gold, and God has given you a kingdom that everything in the world is under your power. Following you, there will be another world power, and that is the, the chest and the arms of silver. And then another world power, and then another one. So going from Daniel and looking yet into the future, we see that the chest and the arms represented the Mede and Persian empire, which dominated the entire world until Alexander the Great came along, the Greek empire. And that's the stomach and the hips of brass. When Alexander the Great conquered the world in his early 30s, he died at a young age and gave his kingdom over to his four generals. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later on in the book of Daniel. Just like the Mede and Persian Empire had the two arms, you had the two legs of iron. And there were two aspects to the Roman Empire. There was the East Empire and the West Empire. Remember Constantinople in Turkey and Rome in Italy. Then there's a break. And we have something that's in the future from us, another worldwide kingdom. Since Rome was dissolved, there hasn't been a world power. But the Bible tells us that there will be, and it will be fragile. There are the ten toes, which later on in the book of Daniel are represented with 10 horns, and they represent 10 world leaders, or 10 countries that make up a confederacy. But according to Daniel, this iron and clay has the strength of iron, but is fragile and can easily be destroyed. It will be broken apart, Daniel says. We look ahead, and that is the world power of the Antichrist. It has the confederation of 10 nations, and he rules over them all but it is fragile and it only lasts for seven years. By the way, that's the same seven years that God is dealing with the nation of Israel once again, the 70th week of Daniel. And when Jesus comes, he puts an end to it all. And we see all of the world powers of all of the past just mean absolutely nothing as Jesus' kingdom is established and will rule forevermore. The confidence that we have that Jesus is going to establish the kingdom of David is that when we look back on the prophecies given to Nebuchadnezzar, that they happened just like he said, and that the future will happen just as the Bible says it will as well. I told you that there was a secondary lesson, and that's when Daniel stood before Nebuchadnezzar. He's very young. It's only the second year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign. Daniel was taken right before he ever began to rule, and he could easily have said, I can tell you the dream. He could have looked out for himself. But instead of doing that, he humbled himself and said, no one can tell you the dream, but God alone. And that's true, by the way, only God can really tell you about the future. But he humbled himself. And at the end of Daniel chapter two, he is exalted to where he is the main counselor for King Nebuchadnezzar. He sits at the gate with Nebuchadnezzar, the Bible says. Now, there's principles in the Bible that tell us that if we humble ourselves, God will exalt us. And if we exalt ourselves, that God will humble us. 
This is one of the, the great principles that we find in the pages of Scripture. I like to say, humble yourself and then humble yourself some more. We learn that lesson from Daniel. And if you will humble yourself, then God will exalt you. But just like in the book of Daniel, God exalted him for God's glory and God will exalt us for his glory. And what a wonderful thing that will be for us. If you like this video, click the like button. We'll see you next time on Hot Topics.